Hello viewers, Alan here. Welcome back to my workshop. Uh, viewers of the channel might remember that I've done some uh, projects on a, a, um, a Victoria dividing head which came into my possession and uh, there are some pieces of it missing, or accessories actually missing from it. Uh, in a direct indexing wheel was one for example. Uh, anyway, in this video what I want to do is fit this chuck, three jaw chuck, uh, to the front of the dividing head. And to do that I've got to make up a backing plate with a, an internal register to match the dividing head and an external register to match the back of the chuck and of course some drill some holes for mounting it. So uh, let's get straight into it. Okay so this is the dividing head and um, this is uh, where a chuck would go but for some reason this machine never had one. This is um, an NT40 or 40 int whichever you prefer socket and uh, you can rotate it of course by turning the handle or by this direct indexing uh, thing that I already made so in working out how to mount the chuck onto that I had a couple of obvious options I could either put a, a 40 inch spindle on the back of it and go in there and use a draw bolt but I didn't like that idea because it would mean I'd have no hole at all through the chuck and I can make a backing plate and bolt it onto the front face here using these holes and that's originally what I was going to do um, but then I decided uh, I'd in fact uh, hook up onto these uh, uh, the same mounting pattern as the uh, this uh, direct indexing wheel that I, I made has so it'll um, basically uh, fit around that and, and I can have either this on its own or both of them or whatever but the point is that uh, by retaining this in the mix I can still do the direct indexing on the back of the chuck Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> so this, uh, I've got, obviously got a good measurement of this. I want a very close fit from a plater on that. And then uh, another good registration on the back of the chuck. So I've made a bit of a start with a lump of cast iron, which is in the lathe. So let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so I've got my piece of ductile iron or cast iron mounted in the lathe. This is a 30mm thick slice off um, 160 mil diameter bar to one of the suppliers uh, around the place uh, was happy to sell me. It's got a rather nasty scale on the outside which has to come off but anyway so I've given the uh, bit I can get out here a cleaner and faced this side off. So um, what I need is um, a hole through there which will be actually quite precisely made uh, to 88.9 but I'm going to start off, I'm going to try, I haven't tried to do this before, but I've got a hole saw here, which is a 73mm, and I'm hoping it will cut a decent sort of slug out of there, which instead of giving me a huge pile of chips that are useless, might give me a piece of cast iron I can uh, actually do something with. You can possibly see here um, some shims. Um, one of the things I do when I'm playing around with these uh, saws, um, you can see what what happens is there's a pair of pins that come through the back of the saw to take the cutting the torque when it starts cutting, but they usually flop about. And I find if you put a, a little set of shims in there, it uh, stops that happening, and you finish up with a much cleaner hole. Anyway, that's what that is. So we're going to start off at uh, 900 RPM, uh, so I can get my pilot drill through, and then we're going to be slowing it right down to um, about 80 RPM for this uh, much larger cutter. Okay, well I'm not all the way through with the pilot drill, but I've got to slow it down now anyway. I'm sure you heard it expressing its displeasure at um, what I was asking it to do. So, <coughs> well, yeah, so we've got to 85 RPM now. Now I have to be careful as well, because um, uh, when the saw comes through, I'm not sure whether it's actually going to clear the, the, the chuck jaw. So I'll be trying to watch out for that and catch it just as it... Uh, gets there and we'll see how that works out
Well, that seems to be cutting nicely enough. Um, I'll bring you back when I'm nearly through. Okay, well I struck a bit of a snag. Um, there wasn't enough depth in there to finish the job. So I've had to um, uh, reassemble it with um, the shims and everything else missing to uh, maximise the, um, the reach. We're nearly through, it's about another three millimetres to go, so I'm, I'm hoping that um, you can get the job done for me. Yeah, I can see a witness on the back now. Ah, oh, in fact, I can see I'm, I'm actually missing the jaws too. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, let's see if we can squeeze just a little bit more cut out of it. There we go. You see that's got the slug. All right. A bit of warmth in that. <laughs> there we are. That's a lot. Oh, it's hot. It's a lot better than a big pile of chips, isn't it? So you just got to bring the boring boat into play now. Now because I don't have a lot of confidence in my abilities and the machine's quite worn I'd like to do um, the bore for the internal register and the external register for the back of the chuck without taking this out of the um, this chuck to ma maximise the concentricity. So I've given a lot of thought to the order of the machining and what I'm going to do first this will be the back of the adapter plate and it will um, uh, interface shall we say with this ring so I'm going to have a, a rebate or a, a shoulder down to, for a piece that will fit in there the overall diameter of this you can see is going to be a little bit bigger so perhaps you'll get the idea and um, once that's done I'll be able to flip it around in the chuck grab hold of this newly created shoulder which is also going to let me uh, finish turn the outside and uh, then I'll do all the other operations um, with the thing turned around in the chuck. Uh, enough talking, let's get to it. Okay, so we're starting off at 160.17 and we want the outer diameter of this spigot to be um, about 110. The exact dimension isn't critical. The spigot just has to be a loose fit within the, the uh, recess on the back of the uh, indexing plate. So we've got 50... Uh, a fat 50 to take off the diameter or 25 off the uh, radius. So let's get going. And I want this uh, spigot to be 5.5 uh, long. Let's just do a test run to see how fast that feed actually looks. And how many times I've made that mistake, I'm meant to be on Y, not X. That was heading it way out to 2000 RPM. I don't think we really want that. That's a bit better. Yeah, that feed in seems fine. So we stopped at 24 just so we can do a quick check. So I haven't got anything grossly wrong with my maths. And believe me, there's precedent for that. That's about 
112, that's fine, so they give us some clean up. Right, I'll bring you back when I've uh, made a bit of progress. Okay, well that's finished the roughing. We're down to um, uh, the, the spigot now would be uh, 5.4 long. Uh, so start getting uh, closer to the actual size that we want. Okay, time for a bit of a clean up and a proper measure and check. I'll bring you back. So, we finished up with um, 110.09, happy with that. And uh, this is the desired loose fit over that. And it needs to be a bit loose because the when I made this thing, the internal diameter of this index ring is a bit different both sides. Anyway, there's no reason for it to be tight. So now I can uh, take it out of the, flip it around and do all the work on the other side. Just grab hold of this boss here. So I thought I'd start to uh, work on this side by checking the run out against the uh, previous face. I mean, this is just in the three jaw. But I'm surprised that the uh, run out uh, is barely two thou. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's have a go at cleaning some of this scale off. So that mill scale is terrible stuff. It's glass hard and it sprays off in all directions and it ruined two cutting corners before I managed to get it all off. Alright, let's clean things up a bit. Alright, now we've got to face this off. We'll do a facing cut to start with and then um, Start getting some dimensional stuff happening. I'm no expert with any of this stuff, but what I've found doing this facing across is I've got a pretty good result. If I had the uh, cutting face of this insert set at 90 degrees to the cut, that seemed to work pretty well. And we'll keep going with that. The overall thickness at the moment is 31.9. And the overall thickness at the end is going to be 25, so I can take a millimetre cut without any trouble. So we'll start with that. Then we get a sensible measurement, 30.59, and we're looking for 25. So, yeah, it's a bit warm now. 
but at the moment I'm showing 25.018 or 25.02 at the time that cools down that's going to be pretty much spot on I'd say certainly close enough for what I need alright <coughs> that's all the dimensions that aren't terribly well most of the dimensions that aren't terribly critical now I've got to do a, a rebate on the outside edge to create the register for the back of the chuck and then I've got to um, bore this out to um, match the um, spindle nose on the uh, on the dividing head. I think I'll start by doing the outer edge, but I think I can have to let it cool down first. So now it's cooled down. I'll take a proper measurement of the thickness. Let's see what we finished up with. Oh, I'm just trying to keep my hands out of the way here. So we're shooting for 25. Well, <laughs> I'll take that. There's a fair bit of luck I think involved in that because when I stopped it was pretty hot and I was having a bit of a guess at how much to allow for um, yeah, seven a bit of a guess how much to allow for uh, cooling. This is 160, the register's got to be 130 and four and a half deep. So uh, I've got to go in about 30 on, on the uh, diameter or 15 on the radius. A bit nervous about this. Chances of me stuffing up are quite good. But anyway, give it a good try. Yes, we're 0.05 over according to that. Hopefully this time. Let's try the chuck. <laughs> oh, yes. That's just sitting on there. That's, that's bloody perfect if you'll pardon me blow my trumpet. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for that. All right. It can come off now. Ugh. Well, that's one register done. All we're going to do now is try and achieve a similar success on the, the centre one. Whew. I think I'll have a cup of tea and a lie down. Now, seriously, this, I'm not very good at doing all this stuff at the best of times, and this old lathe, it's really difficult getting consistency with it. And you've got to guess that when you set it, it's going to pinch a bit more than you wanted and all sorts of nonsense. So it is a bit of a bit of a lucky break, probably, that I got exactly 30, uh, 130. Anyway, I'll take the luck when it comes. OK, so I'm set up now for doing the, uh, the second registration ball. And this one needs to be 88.90 or, or 88.89 in, in that ballpark. And... Um, They've got a pretty stiff um, boring bar set up. So let's see if we can take a depth of cut of uh, two millimetres and see how that goes. Well, I got thoroughly pelted with chips, but it seemed to work all right, didn't it? I'm going to sneak up on it and um, 
to assist in the sneaking. <laughs> I've got a plug gauge here, which I knocked up uh, before we started this. So I'll just slip in a bit of video to show how I made that out of an old pulley. So this is an old pulley which I'm going to uh, machine down to the exact size. I'm really shooting for a diameter here to within 0.01, which is going to be testing my skill, <laughs> which is not, and definitely testing the, the old lathe. But anyway, we'll give it our best shot. So the diameter I'm looking for is slightly less than the depth of that groove. I'm taking this down to create a boss that I can hang on to so I can then flip this around in the, the chuck and machine it from the other side. So I think that'll do fine. I've now got a good diameter that I can get hold of and I flip this around in the chuck and then take this down to the, uh, the diameter I'm looking for. I can't take this all the way down, there's just not enough meat there. Okay, so I've um, turned this around in the chuck, changed the jaws over, and now I want to get this uh, diameter down to uh, 88.89 uh, minus 0, plus 0 0.01, hopefully. So, let's see how we go. I've got this set um, to read at uh, 88.9. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I'm going to call that. I'm going to call that uh, to size. Okay, so we're getting a bit closer now. I reduced my cuts to 0.5, and I've just put a turn the tip around as well, since I want to start getting a bit precise now. So we've got 3.05 to go. Uh, my next cut's going to be 0.5. So I didn't get hit with quite so many chips that time. Um, uh, that's leaving quite a good finish. Alright, let's just keep a check on what we've got. So again, I want to sneak up on it. much heat in there but it's got to keep it in mind there's a bit of warmth in there okay so I've got 0.99 to come out so I'm going to go in at uh, 0.45 and we'll see what happens much heat in that. Still getting a good finish, I'm happy with that. Okay, getting pretty close now, uh, or into the short strokes as one of my friends used to say. Uh, I've got 0.24 to come out on the radius, I'm going to go in at 0.15 and we'll see how that works out. So after several more really light cuts and a bit of sandpapering, I uh, snuck up on the required dimension. That's now saying 88.91. I might leave this and um, this, I mean obviously this thing isn't going to be perfectly the size of the thing that it's representing and if it's um, ever so slightly larger then this hole could be dead right. Um, if it isn't, I think worst case is that this thing might have to be 
just to be persuaded on and pulled off. But I think that's better than having it loose. Uh, or failing all of that, I can put it back in here and hit it with the sandpaper a bit more, I suppose. But I'm inclined to think I should leave leave this as it is. Because this does start in there, and I was looking for a, a good fit. And as I say, this thing's only representing what's actually supposed to go in there, so... Yeah, I think I'll take it out and um, and try it on the, on the real thing. And worst case is, well, I suppose real worst case is it goes back in the forge or But I think really it's, it must be within sanding distance. So I'm going to take a punt on that. Well, it turns out I got lucky. This is absolutely a perfect fit on there. Of course, you can't uh, see that particularly from your perspective or your vantage point, but I can tell you. That uh, slips on there just perfectly. There's, there's no free play at all. It just couldn't be any tighter and still slip on easily. And there's no, no lubrication there at the moment. Oh, it's completely dry. So very happy with that. So that means I've got my two registers done. All that's left to do now is drill some mounting holes. And possibly clean up the outside a little bit more as well because it's a bit scruffy on the outside. So this of course is how it's actually meant to, to go, this will slip on first. Followed up by this. There we go. And of course the chuck's going to sit on there. And you can see how all this looks it's going to work. That's the rough bit I was telling you about. I'm just might do a bit more of a clean up on the outside of that. Okay, so I'm getting set up to um, drill the holes in the uh, backing plate, which is what the, the chuck will bolt up to. So I need to have three um, holes uh, drilled and tapped for M8. So I put the uh, chuck on the ring here and uh, used a transfer punch to uh, mark the position of the holes. Now I've got this uh, center centering indicator positioned to find the um, divot from the centre punch so you can see that's uh, close enough to being on target so now it's time to uh, drill and tap ok so we're going to start with the stubby drill to get the hole started in the right spot alright so we'll change out to the letter H drill for the correct size for tapping for an M8 so I use these uh, use these stubby drills in the milling machine because even though it's a big milling machine you can still run out of uh, vertical real estate okay so we're going to slow that down a little bit now and it's about 800 something like that problem all right Time to swap out for the tap. Alright, off we go. Back him out. And I probably should have put a to sink in before I started the tapping but I forgot so we'll do it after the fact because I'm quite close to this uh, shoulder here I'm just using a nine millimeter drill and to make sure it doesn't rocket in <laughs> and run away I've, I'll feed it in uh, with the, uh, the down feed thing rather than using the wheel So the advantage of doing it that way is that the drill can't get sucked into the, uh, the existing hole and go a lot deeper than you wanted it to. 
and that's happened to me. I dare say it's happened to many of you too. All right, two more the same way, and we can do a test fit. Okay, well we've got our three holes, tapped holes. Let's see if the chuck will fit. I know it's going to fit on the disc. The question is whether or not the holes will line up. That's what we're testing. I'm going to be rotate round that way a little bit. A bit more. It looks like we've got one in a row. At least started all right. Well, that's pretty good. Make sure that's up, Alan. Alright, not happy with that. Okay, so it's time to drill the hole pattern for the uh, flange on the front of the um, spindle nose. Okay, so set up to uh, drill the, uh, the hole pattern for the, the flange on the uh, dividing head uh, spindle hub. So what I've done is uh, pressed the, uh, or this um, uh, plug gauge that I made before I'm using that to locate this on that. Um, it's a pretty tight fit. It, it was um, a, a slip fit in here, but as you saw earlier, it was quite a tight fit in there, but it went in, and so it's it's really got that thing well centered on there. So all I need here is a clearance hole for a 3 16th uh, screw. So I think we're good to go. So I've just done that by eye make sure it's not uh, touching. I want to drill the holes from the back of this thing to give it the best possible chance of lining up but I'll have to turn it over afterwards and counterbore the screw heads from the other side. Anyway, we'll get, worry about that when we get there. Now because I'm drilling into cast iron I'm not using lubricant and these holes are very deep. That's deep in the sense that they're many times the diameter of the drill. And to make sure that the drill didn't get jammed up with chips, I kept pulling it out and blowing the holes out with the compressed air. So otherwise the chips might well have bound up in the flutes, uh, flutes and uh, caused the drill to break. Uh, that's one done. I'll bring you back when I've done the other two holes. Okay, so now I want to do the um, counter bore for the head of the socket head screws. And this little guy here has got a built-in um, pilot on the end, which is uh, a pretty good match for the size of the hole I've got there. And we'll do a um, drill a hole basically, concentric to that, at 8mm diameter, which will give me just room for the uh, the head of the screw. Now I've got to apologise in advance, there's tradies next door to me again, banging and crashing and doing the usual. Anyway, so I want this to be, this counterbore to be 6.5mm deep. And we'll use the uh, Quill DRO for that. And drop the speed a little bit. About 800 or so, something like that. Alright, let's see how we go. That's our zero, and we'll come down six and a half mil. So we'll clean up and 
just check that the uh, screw fits properly. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's, that's what I was, um, the the depth of the it, it's deeper than it needs to be to be just clear of the surface, but it's to make sure the thread engagement length is full on the um, the backing flange that we're bolting this up to. So that's good. Do the other two now. Okay, so I've got my three counterbores, so and I've just slipped them onto the um, the two discs onto the hub. So now it's time to see if it all works. So I've got a first screw in. I've got to find the hole through to the back piece, the rear disc there. All right, now I've got to find the hole in the. Oh come on! Don't don't get all funny on me. Got to find the hole in the hub. Oh yeah, there it is. Well, that's one in the line. See if the others want to line up. Yeah. Huh. So far, so good. That's the tradies next door, banging and crashing. Can't do anything about that, I'm afraid. If I stopped every time they started up, I'd never get anything done. Clumsy. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way of the picture. Alright, so let's just touch those up. So now we get the chuck on and those screws in and then we're going to check out the run out. Where's the hole? There we go. Looking good so far. Just, I'll just nip these up. Don't do anything up tight at this point. Turn the handle, hopefully the truck's going to turn. It's all a bit awkward trying to do this, seeing out the way the camera. Anyway, that's all pretty good. So I think I'll get a dial gauge set now and we'll see what the run out is. I'll bring you back when I'm set up to do that. Now I'm not going to be able to read the dial gauge uh, as I'm turning the handle because I'm standing behind the thing. So I guess we'll discover together uh, what the run out is. But I'll do one full revolution. Here we go. Yeah, so I'll see what the uh, the score is when I look at the video afterwards. Okay, that's a full revolution. Okay, so I've had a look at the uh, the video and I'm quite happy with what I saw. Got a run out of one to two thou. Some of the two might have been due to a bit of wobble from the test rig, but who knows. I did clean this face up a little bit, so end result, uh, pretty good. Okay, well let's wrap that project up. So I've now finally got a dividing head with a direct indexing disc uh, and a, a, a three jaw chuck, so it's ready for some useful work. And in addition to that, <laughs> finished up with a slug of cast iron, which could be useful for another project. Anyway, I uh, hope you found that interesting. Uh, thanks for watching and perhaps I'll see you in the next one.